USC has been one of the biggest surprises of the NCAA tournament. And tonight, the Trojans face North Carolina. We welcome in the coach of the Trojans, Tim Floyd. A lot of folks are surprised that you are in the Sweet 16. Are you surprised you're in the Sweet 16? I'm not. We have talent. Uh, there's not a team playing at this time of the year that doesn't have basketball players. And uh, Henry Bibby left us three terrific perimeter players and Nick Young and Lodrick Stewart and Gabe Pruitt that can really play. Uh, our question was whether we were going to have point guard play or not, which is so critical this time of the year. Uh, we had a kid get eligible um, who, who graduated from high school a year early by the name of Daniel Hackett and Gabe Pruitt. They both have, have done more than enough to uh, give us a chance to win at the point spot. And we've added a 6'9 high school kid by the name of Taj Gibson, who's been terrific to this time, this point of the year. You got to play North Carolina successful doing that last year. As you get ready for them tonight, what is different about them and what carries over and what you've learned about them? Well, from a year ago, they added uh, the number one point guard in the country in Ty Lawson, the number one two guard in the country in Wayne Ellington, the number one power forward in the country in Brandon Wright to go with the best returning big guy in the country last year in uh, Hansborough. Other, uh, <laughs> other than that, they're other they're yeah. just okay, that's all. Uh, and, and then they come off the bench with the guys that started a year ago. <laughs> so uh, it's not going to be uh, a hurdle. It's going to be a mountain to climb. And uh, we understand that, though. They're, they're terrific uh, in the open floor. Ty Lawson, to us, is the real key. Uh, when he gets into the lane and creates angles for those big guys, they become very difficult to beat. Uh, we got to get back on defense. We got to rebound the ball. And, uh, and somehow or another, you got to put points on the board because uh, 80 is their magic number. They get to 80, nobody beats them, and we're going to have uh, to score as well. But uh, fortunately, we do have some guys that can get the ball in the basket. Well, let me move to uh, recruiting for next year in USC. The New York Times had a fascinating story about O.J. Mayo recruiting himself, essentially, to USC. Yeah. Wouldn't a uh, couple of small facts in it. He had a cell phone number that he would not give to you, and he said basically he could handle recruiting. Is he as <laughs> brash as he came across in that piece, Tim? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I wish you guys knew this kid because uh, he, he's, he's fascinating to me. Uh, our athletic director, Mike Garrett, has interviewed more high profile athletes than any athletic director in this country. Um, and I'm talking about from Bush to Leinart, Carson Palmer, all these kids. When he left, when O.J. left his office, he told me this was the most impressive and mature young man that he had ever had in his office. Uh, he's had a vision for what he wanted to do, and that was be in Los Angeles and to put his name on a program. Uh, he didn't want to be the next good player at Duke or Carolina or Kentucky. Uh, he wanted to play for an NBA coach, and he wanted the market that L.A. provided. I said, look, are you sure you want to do this in our first conversation? He says, yes, coach, I'm coming. And I said, well, let me have your cell number. Let's talk. He said, coach, uh, that's not necessary. You're not believing that I'm coming, but I'm coming. I said, well, great. He said, I'll call you. And as it turned out, his mother uh, didn't want 325 Division I head coaches having her number because she's a single mom with three kids, and she really couldn't afford to pay that cell bill day in and day out, and she thought his academics were more important than talking on the cell phone to college coaches all night long. So I don't want this kid mis misrepresented or misportrayed. He's 18 years old. Uh, he's going to go on and become a great NBA player, and he's going to be a great representative for that league. And uh, I heard Will Bond was taking shots at him, and I guess if he was a college coach, he wouldn't recruit him. But I'll tell you this much, if he wouldn't recruit guys like O.J. Mayo, then I'd like to schedule Mike Will Bond. <laughs> From a coaching standpoint, that yeah. might work yeah. okay. Tim. Yeah, this kid, this kid is, is terrific, and y'all need to give him a chance. Uh, uh, if, if you go back and you look at YouTube and you look at the video of what was supposedly the bump, I've had 12 journalists tell me it was a flop. It was nothing more than a flop. And, uh, uh, yeah, he got in a couple fights in high school, but I did too. And I got a sneaking hunch. You guys might have gotten in one or two yourself. And, uh, if we did, uh, we lost them all. <laughs> right. Yeah, we I, lost know them all I know it. You know, I know it. Tim, Tim when, you, when you get a guy who is so atypical to the process and calls attention to himself with whatever it happens, whether it's the uniqueness of his recruiting, his actions on the floor, obviously it's going to raise flags and questions. At what point did you start to believe and see enough in this kid who you had limited contact with that, you know what, this kid is the real deal and he's not a uh, figment of my imagination. Hey, hey, I'm telling you, Mike, uh, if you watch this kid play a game, 
Yeah, he, he dunked the ball and is excited and throws the ball up in the stands. Okay, but I watched him play 25 AAU games, and he's getting hacked and hammered and knocked to the floor and not changing expressions and not throwing punches or elbows, just not reacting to officials' calls, goes to the line. And I, that's what I was impressed with mm -hmm. was his maturity. And uh, he, he's been in the limelight since he was in the seventh grade. Yes, he, had to, he moved to Kentucky. Some man moved him to Kentucky. Uh, he starts as a seventh grader. Then they move him to Ohio. This is a seventh grader. He's not making those decisions. Adults are for mm -hmm. him. But he has tried to separate himself from all of that. Everybody around this kid wanted him at another university. He said, I'm tired of people making decisions for me. I'm going to do what I think is in my best interest. I want, if I'm going to be uh, in college for one year, I want to be in an NBA city where I can start using that as a transition. I want to go to classes in a place where I want to go to class. I want to play for a coach who coached in the league. They've had three Heisman candidates in four years. They can help me market myself because that's a big part of these young kids going into the NBA. And uh, he thinks different. I respect the fact that he didn't have to be the next good player that went to Duke or to Carolina. Uh, that's so refreshing for a guy in my seat. Let me ask this. I'm looking at this from the outside. You're looking at this from the inside. But from the, outside it. From the outside, it looks like it is perhaps a perilous path that everybody's going to take. And one of the questions you would ask when you see him on television, and I, I see you shaking your head, but know. how about coachability? Do you ever worry, can I coach him? And do you ever worry, will he actually come here and go to class and play for me, or, or is it just a springboard to the NBA? No, absolutely. Listen, this kid, um, he hasn't told me that he's leaving in a year, okay? He hasn't told me that. But, but having been in that league and knowing that he doesn't have anything, I don't want the responsibility, um, Tony, of having him two years because this kid can make a lot of money, and I'm going to kick him out. I don't want ha him, what, what happened to Sean Livingston happening to him at my university in year two when I know that he could go out and sign a $30 million shoe contract. Uh, because his family's going to need that. Now, if he insists on staying, sure, we're going to let him stay. But uh, as far as coachability, yeah. two, st two state championships in Ohio, state championship in West Virginia, 41-1 and one this year. Uh, he shares the ball. He moves the ball. Uh, he gets in a stance. He guards people. And all he has talked about to me is, I want to win a national championship. That's, I, that's all he said. I want to win a national championship. He's not coming in to beat Pete Maravich and score 40 points a game. He told me, he said, Coach, Jordan averaged 14 a game at North Carolina. If I have to do that and we win a national championship, then sure, we're going to go do it. As far as the recruiting goes, hey, I loved it. He, he's like the Pied Piper with these high school kids. He said, look, uh, Coach, what do we need in recruiting? I told him the three positions that were open. He said, I'd love to help you with it. I've got some kids that want to come play with me that are great players. Am I going to say no? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you. And, uh, and, and, and sure enough, he got us another great player from Los Angeles, a kid by the name of Davon Jefferson, who's 6'8 and a half, 230. Um, this kid is about winning. That's all he's done is win. And we have the support system at USC because we've dealt with more high-profile athletes than any school in this country to help him continue to mature as a player and, and as a person. Okay, one last question and we'll get you out. With all the notoriety, with all the talent, all the publicity, does this make you nervous at all about coaching him? Absolutely not. I mean, I've coached guys of, you know, in the NBA that, that had great talent. I've, I've coached guys that, uh, uh, you know, the great ones, in my opinion, uh, are not also strong um, uh, physically and, and talented physically. They're talented mentally as well. And... Uh, and just the way he went about his decision and having a vision for what he wanted, knowing he could go anywhere in the country and picking us, um, uh, I know that he's talented mentally. But uh, I've dealt with those kind of guys before. And, okay. uh, and, and as long as this guy's about winning, we're, we're not going to have any issues. And I know this much. That's all this kid is about. He's going to be a great one. Thank you for joining us, Tim, and good luck in the tournament. All right. Thank you. We're tonight. taking a break. When we come back, I will beat Tariko in whatever game we're playing. Baloney. Check that out. Do you know? We got these.